Come on, this is a good day. The good things are coming your way this morning. Welcome to CRC Durban this morning. If you are visiting us for the first time here in the building, welcome. Great to have you. Come on, let's give a great big hand clap this morning. Welcome to you watching on YouTube. Sorry for the delay on YouTube this morning and Facebook this morning. Welcome to you and welcome to those watching from Richards Bay, Belito, and then those that are watching on television. Faith TV, we welcome you. Great to have you with us. Come on, let's give a great big hand clap. Let's look excited this morning, man. Come on, God is on our side. Hey, you are those that aren't walking on the beachfront this morning. You are those that aren't doing the discovery. Well, I mustn't give free advertising. Doing that silly walk this morning. You came to church, so come. Expect and come believe in God. It's going to do a miracle. Come believe God. It's going to do something significant in your life. In the name of Jesus this morning. Well, greet one or two people next to you. And you may be seated. Great to have you with us this morning. I am pumped. I'm excited for this week. I know God is up to good. You know, when Joseph went through all his battles, when Joseph went through all his struggles, it was caused by his brothers, caused by jealousy, caused by blah, 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 blah. But Psalm, I think it's 107, says, uh, uh, talking about the Israelite nation, it says, God sent a man before them, Joseph by name. God is more in control than what we realize. And I'm telling you right now, we have to pray. We have to pray for a godly intervention, but as we pray, we've still got to row. Don't be those Christians that just sit on your rusty dusty. Reach your world. Tell people that there is hope and that, that hope is spelled J-E-S-U-S. Come on, it's time that we get serious about our relationship with God. It's time that we get serious about the things of God. Every week there's a distraction in our city. Every week there's a sporting event. Every week there's a major sporting event. This week it's a big walk. Next week it's some, uh, 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 I nearly said something I mustn't say, okay. Some event that they block in the M4. Then the week after that it's a Comrades Marathon. It's amazing how, how, how they do everything on a Sunday, right? And us Christians just roll over. Listen, Sunday should be a very important day to us because it's the beginning of the week. Sunday. And the first part of the week we come and we commit to God. It's not a case of, oh, okay, Sarah, Sarah, oh, God understands. No, God doesn't understand. He wants your heart. He wants your relationship. He wants to walk with you, and He wants to talk with you, and He wants to use you, and He wants to bless you, and we can't serve God by the way. And so really, maybe this season is a wake-up call for all of us to press into God. And so I want to speak a little bit this morning about possessing the promise that God has for you. I mean, God will allow the worst things that happen to you to bring out the best in you. He will cause you to rise out of those ashes if you follow Him. He will prepare a table before you, a feast in the presence of your enemies. He will cause goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life. That's what the Bible says. And I want to share a word this morning that I believe is twofold. Number one, you can rise again. You can get up again. You can possess the promise that God has for you again. One, it's about you that God wants to bless you and put you in a position of influence and success for His glory and so that you can make His name famous. But you have a role to play. Secondly, number one, it's personal. Your relationship with God is very personal but never private. But the one part of it is that you can rise again. You can get back up again. But the second is that you have a role to play within society. And unfortunately for many of us Christians, we become complacent. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. No. God works with you. God wants to work in you so He can work through you. We're talking about 2024 being a year of overflow. Well, the reality is God's not going to overflow you when it's all about you. Genesis chapter 12, I love it. Not my main scripture, but just a little, little feeder. When God calls Abram, he wasn't Abraham, father of many nations. At that stage, he was Abram. And in Genesis 12 verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house. Stop. That's not a word for you. You know, I've been thinking about going to Canada. No, Jack, that's not what the Bible's talking about. Oh, pastor, you confirmed. No, I didn't confirm nothing. I'm not speaking prophetically. Get out of your country. 
Are we going to have one of those Sundays? Well, I was thinking, you know, with the elections, and I was just thinking and planning, and I was just thinking maybe, you know, I could. Now listen to me now. You stay put. God set some members in the house as it pleases Him. There's a brother visiting here from, 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 from somewhere, and he's a friend of mine, and he's been with me for 20-something years. And every time I talk to him, I say, where are you going to church? You know where you're supposed to be? And now he's back in the house where he's supposed to be. I saw you hiding in the back. I saw you hiding in the back. You're back home, brother. You, can't, you can run, but you cannot hide. God sets the members in the house as it, as, it, as, it, as it pleases him. They always come back together, him and I, in the strangest of places. Just smile. Say, you, say amen. I can see your white teeth at the back there, I think. This is not a word to run, okay? I'll show you what it's a word for. Get out of your country, no. From your family, somebody maybe. From your, not your husband or your wife. <laughs> from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I, here comes a promise. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed. I'm just going to stop there as the Lord had spoken to him. So, so what is God really saying to Abram? He's saying, Abram, he comes out of an, an ungodly environment. And God's saying, listen, you've got to get out of that comfort zone because we do get com comfortable with our dysfunction. We do get comfortable with our lack. We do get comfortable with all the problems that we live, we live with and we sort of tend to embrace them. And he says, listen, get out of your country. Get out of your family, get out of your father. In other words, get out of those things that you become dependent upon. Abram's father was a very wealthy man. He had everything he needed. And God gave him a promise and said, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. I will empower you to prosper and to succeed. And then you have a responsibility to empower others. Listen, family, it's important. We have to understand that God wants us blessed. There's no issue with that. But the focus can't be us all the time. There's a purpose to the blessing. There's a purpose to the promotion. There's a purpose to, to the favor. There's a purpose to God restoring you when you've gone through a tough time. And that is so that you can be a blessing to other people. You are here because somebody invited you. You are here because somebody played a part in your relationship with God. You are here because somebody paid a bill for a facility. I will bless you, empower you to prosper, to succeed. And you will be a blessing, be used by God to empower others. And verse 4, so Abram departed as God instructed him. He obeyed God. So it's the same when God wanted to take His people, the nation of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and into the promised land. He spoke to a man, Moses. God always starts with a man. And sometimes we get all this messed up in the body of Christ and we want the tail to wag the dog. We want the businessman to, to lead the pastor. No, the Bible says that God gave some gifts, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. The fivefold ministry is actually a gift to the body of Christ. It's a fivefold ministry that brings the vision that God has for His people. It's a fivefold ministry. When God wanted to get a mandate of winning the lost at any cost, He spoke to a man in a small town called Lady Brand, and the man's name was Pastor Adbosov, and he impressed upon his heart a vision for a move of God where we would be soul winners 30 years ago. He didn't start with a committee. He didn't start with a billionaire. He started speaking to a man who stood in the office of the fivefold ministry and said, listen. Now, CRC is not the only way to God. Not that we are the way to God. I mean, the only church in the kingdom of God. Did somebody pick what I'm saying? My stumbling words. But we are a critical part. And because God saw something and saw something that was necessary, He spoke to a man and gave him a mandate to win the lost at any cost. And then we who join in that vision have to carry the same thing. So when we went through COVID and COVID got us all separated, although our heartbeat is soul winning, we stopped doing it. Because now we need to recover. Because now we need restoration. Because now it's all about, oh, I went through a tough time. No, 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 the mandate never changed. We have to get back to our purpose. I will bless you, and you will be a blessing. 
I will raise you up into a place of influence, into a place of purpose, so that you can use your platform to glorify the name of Jesus. So you can use your platform. I was asked to go and represent the International Federation of Christian Churches at the handover of the, of the ICC to the IEC for the elections. This is how I work. I go because I have to. I'm not very good at sitting in those places. I cause nonsense and I get bored. I get into trouble. So, and there are lots of police there. So I got to get arrested. So I had to behave myself. So I thought, I wonder who's there. And there was one person there that I wanted to see. So I texted them and they happened to be there, one row behind me. And we sat together and now they're in church. Maybe, maybe I was in that meeting just for that one person. You guys are missing what I'm saying this morning. Listen to me. God promotes you for influence. And maybe, I'm just saying, I'm painting a scenario. I'm not saying it is. My influence on that one person is going to have an influence on many people we don't even know about. Or maybe somebody else that I met there at the meeting, God is going to use me to touch. What I'm trying to say is, family, we have to get back to our purpose. We have to get back to our mandate. If we're going to possess the promise, we have to understand, possessing the promise is all about God's purpose. It's all about God's purpose, which is to win the lost at any cost, to seek and save that which is lost, Luke 19 verse 10. I'll get to the nice parts where you all clap when I start just talking about how God wants to bless you. And then, they're like, hey man, great message, pastor. Oh, brilliant. Goosebump upon goosebump. No, miracle upon miracle. Goosebumps didn't change anybody. I'm not anti the Holy Ghost touching you. I'm for it because we need the Holy Ghost. But you shall receive power to be witnesses. Sorry, you receive power to shake. No, to be a witness. You'll receive power to, 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 to talk, talk, talk in tongues. No, you receive power to, to witness. When last did you witness about Jesus Christ to somebody? When last did you tell somebody about how you were lost and now you are found, how you were blind and now you see? When last did you walk into a business meeting and before you signed the deal, you said, can we just bow our heads and pray? Oh, but there are people of other religions. Hey, excuse me, you're a Christian first. Maybe that moment of prayer, God's going to say, stop, don't sign. Hey, we can't exclude God out of the equation. Romans 1, 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For those who believe, there's power when you believe God. There's power when you walk with God. There's power. With the amount of Christians that are just in this room, we should be able to change the city of Durban. We should be able to change the city of Durban. We should be able to change the city of Durban. We should be the light in the darkness, the hope to the lost. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, come on this morning. But pastor, I'm worried about the elections. Pray. Who are you going to vote for? I'm not going to tell you. Don't, don't, don't not vote. So he speaks to a man, Moses. Moses is a leader that God wanted to, to use, and many people must understand this, to lead his people out of bondage. That's what leadership does. Leads people out of bondage into the promised land, what God has for them. And so he tells Moses to instruct 12 leaders to go spy out the land, to come back with a good report for the people, to build faith and to develop a strategy. Numbers 13, quickly. Numbers 13. Numbers 13. And in Zulu, a numbers. I don't know. What's, what's numbers in Zulu? Quickly. What's numbers in Zulu? Come on, somebody help me. Huh? A number. There, thank you. A number 13. And that's from somebody that's Zulu, so I wasn't far wrong. Numbers 13, verse 27, it says, Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us, and it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Durbanites dwell by the sea. No, the Canaanites. We're not the Knights. We're not Ites. The Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. Verse 30, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. 
Caleb sounds like a CRC member. Caleb sounds like a, like a, like a, a sold-out Christian. Let us go up at once, for we are and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him, ten spies, said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Who told you? Who are you listening to? Whose voice is influencing you? The newspaper, the media, your auntie with an ingrown toenail somewhere that's moaning all the time. Who is dripping negativity into you when God has given you a promise and a future and a hope? When God says, I am with you, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When God says, the greater one resides on the inside of you. When God says, if I am for you, who can be against you? With God who says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With God who says, whatever is born of Him overcomes the world. Who is drip feeding you negativity? And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which I went is full of crime. The land through which I went is full of corruption. The land through which I went has got potholes. Service delivery is poor. The land I went through, blah, 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 white noise. White noise. Men, men are funny creatures. Okay. When they've been made for a while, they develop this ear thing. It's called white noise. And you get home. It's bad. And you get home. And, and you're tired from working. Not that your wife didn't work, but that you're just tired from working. You know what I mean? Oh. And your wife greets you and she's talking to you and it's like... Are you listening? Yes, yes, yes. yes. What did I say? Uh, um... Um, 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 sorry, I was just thinking about. Uh, um, um, um. So I had ear infections. I went for an ear test the other day, and the lady that did my ear test, she's a lady. She doesn't know how to use the machines because she said I've hurt my ears badly. Okay, but anyway, I asked her for a letter to write me a prescription to say that white noise is real. And I nearly got her to write it. She said, but if somebody else sees it, you're in trouble. I'm in trouble. So the, the point I'm trying to get, let's turn, tune into white noise to negativity. Let's tune white noise into those things that rob us of our faith. Let's tune into white noise for those things that tell us we can't do it. Let's tune that white noise into anything that is negative because that is what's stopping us from rebuilding our city. That is what's stopping us from rebuilding our country. That is what's stopping us from possessing the promise God has for us. All that negativity that is dripping into your life, all that negativity that you're swallowing through your ears and consuming through your eyes. Who told you that giants are bigger than you? Who told you that there's no future for you? Who told you that there's no future for your children? They gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Then we saw the giants, and the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so were we, we, we were in our own sight. So as you see yourself, so you are. I mean, I've said it a hundred times. What do you see in the mirror when you wake up? What do you see when you look in that mirror? A little kitty cat or a lion? What do you see? I mean, when I wake up in the morning and I walk into, that, in, into my bathroom and I just look in the mirror, I, 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 that wakes me up. I walk in and look, I go, look, Emma. But you're good looking. Hey, look at that lion in the mirror. What do you see? Because as you see, so you are. That, that's why you've got to let go of your past. 
That's why you've got to forgive those who've hurt you. That's why you've got to let go of those who molested you. That's why you've got to walk in forgiveness every single day. Because if you don't let go of the past, you let your past identify you. You let your failures identify you. You let your shortcomings identify you. You let what the negative person identify you. Now listen, you've got to say, I am made in the image and likeness of God. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can be all God has called me to be. Oh, come on. Somebody that sees a lion when they look in the mirror. Somebody that sees a lioness when they look in the mirror. Listen, here's the deal. Here's the deal. There will always be opposition to God-ordained vision. There will always be a p- opposition to God's destiny and plan for His people. John 16, in the Amplified Translation says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence in Him. In Him. In the world you will have tribulation, trials, distress, frustration. But be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of its power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Listen, family, while you are in these bodies on this side of heaven, you're going to have some battles you have to overcome. You're going to have some giants you have to defeat. You're going to have some tests that you will have to write, but they can become your testimonies. And you have to walk by faith, Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it's impossible to believe Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Listen, that whole Hebrews, by faith, this one did this. By faith, that one did that. You can put your own name into it. It's a hall of faith, not fame, hall of faith. By faith, they did this. By faith, they overcame that. By faith, they served God. By faith, we built a business for the glory of God. By faith, we raised a family for the glory of God. By faith, we lived out our destinies for the glory of God. By faith, we raise our kids in faith. That's why your relationship with God is so critical. It's not a course you do. Church is not a course. I went to church for a while and I I got all the stuff I know. No, 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 no. no. Can you remember every meal your wife has cooked for you? Can you remember if you're 30 years old for every meal you've eaten for the last 30 years? No, you can't. But without those meals, you wouldn't be alive. It's not just about what you receive every Sunday. It's what you receive in your spirit. Every time you come to church, God is moving in this place. Every time we gather as believers, that's why the Bible says in Hebrews, do not neglect the gathering of the saints as is the manner of some. We've made church not, uh, no longer a priority for people. I'll go and read Ephesians 1 verse 20 to 23 in the message translation. Whatever God is doing in the earth today, it's through the local church. The world is not peripheral, uh, the church is not peripheral to the world, but the world is peripheral to the church. It's in, in the church that God acts and does His works. So if you want to know what God is doing in the, in the world today, it's through the church. That's why you need to be in church. Not to make me feel good for you. Because you might just be sitting here today and, 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 and God's feeding your spirit, man, not your head. Oh, pastor, great message. Praise God. That was good. That made, but, but what does it help if it just touches your head? It's got to touch your spirit. It's got to become a core belief in your life. And many people are telling us now the church is not so important. I want to tell you now, the church is the most important institution in the world. The church is the most important institution in the world. The church is the most important institution. You can criticize certain church moves, but wherever you go, you'll find a Catholic church in the center of a city. Wherever you go, you'll find a Dutch Reformed church in the center of a city. Wherever you go, you will find Anglican churches because the people of old understood the importance of the church of the local church. Oh, come on. Somebody who loves the church, just give Jesus some praise this morning. Somebody who loves the church. Do we know who the church is? Because Jesus is the head and the church is His body. My wife stand, quickly. Get embarrassed. Just for another clap. No, no, she's done nothing. The clap for when she's done something. 
imagine if I go to my wife this morning and I say, love, I love your hair. You got the most beautiful face. Your eyes are so glorious. Your nose is so cute and those lips, especially when you're crossing me, they get all puffed up. They're so cute. But let me tell you one thing, my love. As much as I love your head, your body sucks. That marriage is going nowhere. That marriage is going nowhere. Listen to me. You can't tell Jesus you love him, but you don't like his church. You can't tell Jesus you love him, he's the head, but his body sucks. Oh, come on. We've got to change our mindset. We've got to love the church. The church is made of different people. They're different sizes, different colors, different everything. But we love the corporate church of Jesus Christ. We love the local church of Jesus. That's not in my message. I think about Abram. Abram eventually has a son, the father of promise, and his son, his name is Isaac, Genesis chapter 22. I'm not going to read it. I'll read it later. But he says, God tells him, take Isaac, your only son. Go and sacrifice him to me. Go and say, I spoke a bit about this last week. Abram took the promise, and his promise was a son. God's promise for him was a nation. And when the son of promise was not manifesting, Abram and Sarah went and, 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 and used Sarah's maidservant where Abram had a son, Ishmael, and God doesn't even recognize Ishmael as a son because that's his legitimate son. And God says to Abram, take your son, and, and in Genesis 22, he says, your only son. What about Ishmael? No, that's not, but that's not the son of promise. But here's the reality. Abram believed the promise. And he thought to himself, if God wants me to sacrifice my son because it's the son of promise, God will raise him up as well. It was a test. So while Abram was walking up one side of the mountain to sacrifice Isaac, a ram was walking up the other side for, to be the sacrifice. And that's where Abraham encountered God as Jehovah Jireh, the God that will provide. You see, the challenge is we want God to bless us, but we're focusing on the problems. We want God to promote us, but we're focusing on, 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 on the battles. We want God to use us, but we're looking at the giants. We want God to bless us without being a blessing to other people. Listen, family, what I want you to hear again is you can rise again. The city can rise again to its former glory. But there's always a purpose to your rise. I mean, the 12 spies are sent in. 10 come back with a negative report. And Caleb says, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. Listen, I want you to hear it this morning, but not here. I want you to hear it in your spirit. You are well able. You are well able to build that family. You are well able to build that business. You are well able to build that career. You are well able to overcome. You are well able to make a difference. You are well able. You are well able. Not because I say so, but because God says so. But you've got to get into agreement with God. That's part of our challenge. The broken stage. That's part of our challenge. We don't agree with God. God is not a democracy. He's a theocracy. As a Christian, if God said it, that should settle it. Now, God, you told me this, but I just want to tell you about all the giants in the land. Okay, you're going to miss out. The whole generation missed out. The whole generation didn't enter in the promised land because they, they were negative. Whole generation. We have to settle it once and for all. If God said it, it doesn't matter the journey. It doesn't matter the battles. I mean, they matter, but, but if God said it, it's going to come to pass. If God meant it for you, it's going to come to pass. But you've got to get into agreement with God. God, I believe you. I believe you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you like Joseph in the pit, and I trust you in the palace. I trust you in Potiphar's house as much as I trust you in prison. It doesn't matter where, what I have to go through. I'm going to trust you. 
My family's going to get saved. My children are going to serve God. There's a great future for, 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 for us in South Africa. God is going to raise up politicians like a Joseph who are going to serve the purpose of God and serve the people of God in Jesus' name. We're going to see righteousness rule in our land again. We're going to see a lot of the negativity turned around. Pastor Howe, that's the journey. That's the trust. That's the belief in God. There are enough good people in our nation. But we've got to cut out that white noise. You are well able to overcome when you believe God's promises. You are well able to see a future for South Africa, the country that God ordained it to be. We are well able to build for a future for generations to come. We are well able to see a move of God in our city. But we've got to come into unity. I like what you said, but I want to I I I debate you on something. What do you want to debate me on? How do you debate God? I told you, he's a theocracy. God said it. Unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. But, but if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Yeah, but, but, but don't I have to go and do a theological degree before I get saved? Uh, do you remember the guy in pres- uh, that was on the cross next to Jesus? One mocked him, the other one said, remember me. Remember me when you, uh, when, you, when you get to your father today. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Remember that one? Imagine him coming to pearly gates and trying to get in. And, 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 and whoever's at the gate to let him in says, um, excuse me, who are you? Mine's De- My name's Jack. And I, I, I um, yeah, why are you here? And the guy on the cross said I could come. Have you not done, you know, Christianity 101? Have you not done your NMO class? Have you not done, done, done um, no, the guy on the cross said I could come. No, no, have you not, do you, do you not understand the, the doctrine of justification by faith? Huh? What, what are you talking about? The guy on the cross said I could come. You see, sometimes we, we, we get all mixed up because we want to prove ourselves senior to other people in theology. Now listen, let's get back to the basics of loving God and loving people. Let's get back to the basics that when, when God speaks to us, we obey God. We follow God like an Abram. So he departed. So he ran after God. So he believed the word of the Lord. So he began to be that Christian in business, began to be that Christian in a school, began to be that Christian wherever God placed him in a political environment. We have to believe God. Mark 9, 23, I'm nearly done. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe. You can rise again if you believe. You can overcome again if you believe. You can see the goodness of God again if you believe. You can win your family and friends to Christ if you believe. We have to believe God. Abram believed God. Caleb believed God. Twelve spies, ten negative. Caleb says, we are well able. Why? Because God said, I'm giving you the land to possess as an inheritance. I'm giving it to you already. You've just got to go and possess it. You see, God gives, we've got to possess. God's given us this city. God's given us this nation. But we as children of God have to go and possess it. We have to do our part. We pray and then we row. We pray and then we row. Go to the other side. There's a storm. Pray. Now row. Row, 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 row. We want to sit and let God move. No, God moves through us. But we have to start by believing God. Here's an interesting challenge. Many Christians don't believe about the principle of tithing. How do you know that, Pastor? Because statistically speaking, 89% of those who profess Christianity don't tithe. You can trust God with your eternal salvation, but you can't trust Him with your money, 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 which He calls the least. One yep. <laughs> it's not meant to be a heavy, just, just to think. I love you, Lord. But don't touch my wallet or my time. Yeah, go for it. I'll sing it. Oh, we got the other one. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him I freely give, except my Sunday morning, 8.30. Oh. Come on, family. Let's stop playing church. Let's stop playing church. 
if each one of us reaches one, this building's too small next week. And the following week, we all reach one, then we need a bigger building, then we need a bigger building. We're playing. And we're moaning about what's not happening in South Africa and what's not changing in society. But if we want to change people, we've got to change their heart first before you can change their mind. We have to believe God. Number two, quickly, we have to declare the Word of God. In other words, we've got to become a prophetic voice. Are you telling me I'm a prophet now? No, I didn't say that. A prophetic voice. Proverbs 18 verse 19, uh, 18 verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You will eat the fruit of what you speak. That's why you're going to cut out that white noise. Because you go over there, oh, this country's finished. Oh, this problem's there. Oh, this, uh, me, 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 me. And without even realizing, you get caught up in that. The economy's bad. Really? Says who? It's manipulated. There are many people doing exceptionally well in this economy. There are many people that are prospering like never before in this economy. Hello, 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 hello. Many, I spoke to somebody the other day, a certain BMW, 600 gets sold a month. Certain uh, uh, model of BMW, 600 gets sold a month. I'm thinking, black Emma, where? God was telling me last week. There's money. Money's not the issue. It's what we believe. And not only what we believe, it's what we declare. Do you wake up and declare your children are blessed? Your children are flying. Even in the midst of adversity, you have to declare the Word of God. By His stripes, I am healed. I will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. We have to declare it. We have to declare Isaiah 60, 17 and 18 over our city, over our province. I get these security messages all the time about what potentially could go wrong during the elections. And my response is, what? Gee, I'm concerned. Gee, I'm fearful. I'm going to order a tank and, and, and a whole lot of security guards to come look after me. No. Violence shall no longer be hurt in our land. Neither wasting nor destruction within our borders. But I will call our walls salvation and our gates praise. Why? Because I'm going to oppose the fear when the enemy comes knocking. I'm going to oppose it with the word of God. Because God watches over his word to perform it in our lives. God watches not over my feelings. God watches not over the negative reports. God watches over the word. So I'm going to tell the devil, he must shut up. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And as a sound mind, I'm going to say, violence will no longer be heard in our land. We are going to declare that Durban is a great city. That Durban will be restored to its former glory. That Durban will still be the most attractive city in South Africa. That Durban will be a totally multiracial city. That Durban is blessed. That Durban is prosperous. That Durban is peaceful in the name of Jesus. Declare God's word. The Bible says 1 Peter 3, 10, 11. For he would love life and see good days. He would love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Not sit and wait, do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. So we have to believe God. We have to declare God's word. And we have to action his promises. Action. Action. So Abram departed. God gave him a promise. So Abram departed. He had to depart from what he was comfortable with. He had to depart from what he was familiar with because God gave him a promise that was far bigger than what his father had. The Bible says in Numbers 14, verse 20, go and read Numbers 14. I haven't got time this morning, but it's verse 20, 24. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned. Well, let me, let me just stop. Let's make one verse extra. In Numbers 14, verse 1. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to him, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, if only we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children? <laughs> Victim mindset. 
Victim, you're not called to be a victim. You're called to be a victor. You're not called to be overcome. You're called to overcome. You're not called to talk about your test. It's supposed to be your testimony. The battle is there to glorify God. The battle is there so you can walk in victory and you can declare that the Lord is good. In verse 20 it says, Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Come on, that's a promise. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness have put me to the test now these ten times have not heeded my voice, have not actioned my word. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. Look at this. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, not a different Holy Spirit, a different spirit, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring, it into the, bring him into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit. Listen, different spirit, different attitude. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. When, 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 when Paul was on his way to Rome and, and he was in the ship and it got shipwrecked, and the, the ship is falling apart and they're throwing things all over the board, the ship, and they, they all think they're going to drown and there's fear and the people are shouting and screaming and the wind is breaking on the ship and, and the noise, I mean the wind, the waves and the noise and, and everything's chaotic. He stands up and he says, listen people. Last night, an angel of the Lord to whom I belong, to whom I serve, came and spoke to me and said, there'll be, be loss of ship, but no loss of life. And he goes, and I believe, just as it was told me. I believe God. He then spoke the word of God. Then he actioned the word of God. Caleb had a different spirit, a different attitude. He believed God. He trusted God. And that came out of a relationship with God. I want you to stand this morning. Maybe you're saying, but Pastor, if I was like Paul and I was in a shipwreck and an angel appeared to me, you don't need an angel. You've got the Bible. You've got Genesis right through to Revelations. You've got the body of Christ. You have the church. All we have to do is press into God. All we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. When last did you read your Bible and say, God, I'm open, speak to me. God, I'm hungry, speak to me. In chaos, I often think, where are the Josephs that God raised up? Where are the Nehemiahs? Where are the Davids, the Daniels, the Esthers? Are they around? They're just not answering the call. Now it's time to answer. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I want to thank you that you are real. That this is not a religion. It's a relationship. And I ask you this morning to move again upon us, your people. We pray for a move of God in our nation. We pray for a move of God in our city, in our province. We pray this morning, Lord, for a move of God in our lives. We ask you to come and tabernacle with us. Come on, just lift your hands. There's a presence of God here. And you speak to Him. You talk to Him for a moment. You lift your expectation. Like the psalmist writes in Psalm 121, I lift my eyes from the hill, from, up to the hills from whence my help comes. My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Our help comes from the Lord. Father, we need you to work in us so that you can work through us. We ask you this morning, Father. We reach out to you this morning, Lord. 
We lift our hands as an act of surrender. We say, have your will with our lives, whatever that might mean. Like an Abram, take us out of the places of comfort, Father. And let us be like Abrams that just say, so Abram obeyed. So Glenn followed the Lord. When he called his disciples, he said, follow me and I will make you. Not us striving and sweating to make us. We follow him. He does the making. He does the building. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Oh, Father, we pray for a move of God. We pray today that you would touch people across our nation. That even politicians will be touched today. And the weeks and the months that lie ahead. We pray, Father, come on, just pray with me a little bit. We pray for a move. We are hungry for a move of God in Durban. Across this great city, Father. We are hungry to see you move. In formal settlements and informal settlements. We are hungry to see a move of God that will sweep across our province. That you will raise up men and women of God to preach in different dialects. People that will not compromise. People that will serve the purpose of God in their generation. Move, we pray, Father. We cry out to you this morning. We cannot have a move of God without God moving. So we reach out to you this morning, Father. We are willing to possess the promise you have for us. But we ask you, Father, to guide us. We ask you to lead us like the psalmist writes, The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. He guides me. He'll prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Even though I walk, sometimes we're going to have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil for God is with us. His rod, His staff will comfort us. And then He gives us a promise. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We will abide in His presence. Father, I thank You. I thank You that You hear our prayers. I thank You that You've heard every prayer prayed this morning, Father. Now I say to you, you put your hands down, but just close your eyes. You've come here this morning. Your life is not right with God. We're not here to judge you or to criticize you. Maybe you're watching on the, on, on the other side of those cameras and your life is not right with God. I'm not, I'm not saying anything, but do you know Him? Is Jesus Christ truly Lord of your life, owner? Because if he's not the owner, he cannot be your savior. Maybe you served him once and you've wandered away from him and it's time to come back to him. Maybe you don't have that assurance of salvation in your heart. You can have that assurance. All you've got to do is reach out to him, call out to him. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart upon the Lord, you shall be saved. While every head is bowed, every eyes closed. Believers are praying, nobody looking around. You've never given your heart to Christ. You have, but you've wandered away from God. Or you don't have that assurance of salvation. I want to lead you in a prayer. I want to pray with you. If that's you all over this place, quickly slip up your hands and say, yes, you're talking to me. Pray for me this morning. Include me in your prayer, quickly. Include me in that prayer. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? Quickly slip it up high so I can see it. Say yes. Yes. Pray for me. Include me in that prayer, quickly. Anybody else? Quickly. Thank you. Anybody else? Just say yes. Lift your hand up high. Say, yes, God's speaking to me. There's a stirring in my heart. I want to come back to God. Pray for me. Lift up your hand high quickly. Say, yes, you're talking to me. You're talking to me. Pray for me quickly in Jesus' name. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Quickly. Put your hands down. Thank you. Thank you. I want you all to look at me. You raised your hand. You should have raised your hand. I want to lead you in the prayer, in a prayer this morning. Please pick up. Oh, I'm not going to say that. If you want to give your life to Christ, come back to Christ. Get that assurance of salvation. I'm going to ask you to leave your chair. Come meet me here at the front so we can pray with you now in Jesus' name. Come on, come quickly. Let's give him a great big hand clap this morning. Come on. Come on, ushers, help me. Come on, you raise your hand. You should have raised your hand. Come on, come. Come on, come. Come quickly. Come on, God loves you, man. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Say to your friend, I'll walk with you. Come on, come. Come, 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 come. Come on. Oh, come on, there was more. There was more. Come on, you come. Come on, clap. CRC, come on. Come on. Come home to the Father. Come on, come. Come home to the Father. 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 Come home
Come on, God loves you, man. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Come on, you've got to give yourself to Him. You've got to give yourself to Him. You've got to give yourself to Him. Come on, you raise your hand. Should have raised your hand. Come quickly. Come on, come. Come, come. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. Come on, come, come, come. Come, come, come. Make Him your first love. Make Him your first love. Make Him your first love this morning. Come on, come in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anybody else quickly come. Come, 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 come. Come. There's still a few more young people. Come, 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 come. Come quickly. Okay, listen to me quickly. You know, I can always see when the young people aren't all here. Because the young people are the easiest ones to win to the Lord. Because they haven't got bad mindsets. I didn't say it, I did. The older you are, the more difficult it is for you to surrender. We have to reach our world, young, old, black, white, Indian, colored, whatever. We have to become radical back on our mandate. Each one, reach one. Just put your hand upon your heart. We're going to pray this prayer this morning. Just pray this simple prayer. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, and I give myself back to you. I ask you to take your rightful place in my life as my Lord and as my Savior. And today, I receive your love, your forgiveness, and your promise of new life. I ask you this day to lead me, to guide me, to use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Look at me quickly. By the profession of your faith, the Bible says you are saved. Your sins are forgiven you. You are a new creation, whether it be a first-time commitment, recommitment. It's up to you to follow him. We'll help you but it's up to you. So just for a moment, we want to pray with you. Turn to your left, my right for a second. And we're going to pray, we're going to pray with you. Come on, give me a great big hand clap this morning. Quickly, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.